You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Uh, welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Uh, this is uh, Greg Vore, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Uh, today we'll be ending Startup Blogs Insights for 2013 with the top five blog articles for the year. Um, we'll be joined by Taffy Williams, examiner, writer, and entrepreneur, and the co-founder of uh, and CEO of Colonial TDC. And uh, he'll discuss his top blogs of the year and give some background on on uh, each of them for us. Uh, this morning. So, anyway, good morning, Taffy, and welcome to our last Startup Blogs Insights for December 2013, uh, live from North Carolina, right? Yeah, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Um, doing okay. Uh, I think uh, ready to end 2013 on a high note here. So, uh, we'll be going through his top five blogs, as I said, and he'll give a story on each one and kind of, you know, let you kind of give, learn from his stories there for each one of them. So, let's get started. Uh, let's do a countdown. Uh, we'll go with number five here. Uh, five reasons entrepreneurs never get their big exit. And uh, one of the quotes I got from your one of your articles I'd like to read here: uh, Starting a business without learning everything uh, you can you can about the area can be just as detrimental, <laughs> especially if you're using your own money and expecting near-term income. Right. Right. I mean, you know, it's a, it it's very. I know a CEO who is running a company, uh, his attention span is short, and his memory is short. <laughs> and so you, you can go through and try to educate and provide all the information about a technology, but he really doesn't understand all of the technology and when he stands in front of people that comes across and it shows. Uh, that's a, you know, a concern. And so, uh, you know, but you really do want to try and make sure you understand uh, what you have because sometimes you're standing in front of investor groups that are asking questions and they're expecting you to demonstrate an ability to run the company but you got to show them that you understand what you're doing where you're going so you can generate some confidence I see and so you know but, but you know this story was about exits and exits come in different forms and people always tend to forget an exit that's not listed here and I, I wrote written a special one before just on that exit but the exit people tend to forget is their own exit. You may not be there when the company gets sold. You may not be there when the company goes public. There's a, you know, you have an exit. And, and when you start a company, when you're in a company, it's important that you create an arrangement with the company that takes care of you so that if you're asked to leave early or you elect to leave early, your personal exit in the future is taken care of. So that if you are own options, but the options don't vest and you don't get to carry them for 10 years, they only have them for, for 60 days, what are you going to do? Uh, but if you have equity, and the equity is yours, and you own it, and, uh, and, and the company goes public, then you can do something with it. And so you want to make sure that you work out whatever arrangements are to take care of your own exit. And this is something that I've, I've learned uh, the hard way. And I've <laughs> managed to try and incorporate that in just about every I event that I have, um, you know, every interaction that I go through uh, for myself. But when I advise companies, and some companies don't, haven't done this. I had a, a long call with a person in England mm -hmm. who was having some issues with one of their investors. Turns out that he didn't make a contract with the organization, didn't have his equity such that he could do anything with it and he's now in a position where he may have to leave uh, because he can't get the investor to go along with doing the things he wants to do he no longer owns 51 percent and and he's not going to have a liquid company because he's unable to do anything with that he can't sell his shares and he's sitting there where all of a sudden he personally will may get nothing out of what he built wow. and so always take care of your own exit first and then worry about the exits of all the other investors because those are also critical too. Now, now you know, it's interesting uh, you say the exit for yourself, the, the startup entrepreneur who actually uh, probably you know, started the business or is a principal there. Uh, we always kind of think that and we talked about this on um, another show that we, we, we always think that we're going to be there forever, don't we? Yeah. Uh, you know, if you start it, uh, you know, at some point, though, as you begin to sell equity, your percent ownership falls off. And, right. and your goal should be to design the company in a way that, uh, that gives you 
the ability to do what's in the best interest of the investors in a company, not yourself. And so in just recently, in trying to create a company out of another business, we're spinning it out, and I was helping to do it. I tried to set up the arrangements for the parties such that they automatically had, the CEO would automatically have a license with his other organizations for all the technology so that he would get royalties. I tried to make sure that he encouraged him to set up a contract so that he would be able to walk away with what he owned. And I tried to set it up to where if he were asked to leave, he would be okay with that uh, because basically he would still walk away with uh, financial benefits in the future from having succeeded in building a company. Um, I once asked somebody that came into my office, uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, in New York, working out of New York, mm. um, you know, which one, which one of the scenarios makes you the most money? Um, you make a million dollars a year for ten years. Uh, by being in 10 different companies and leaving each year, or you make $10 million in year 10 by leaving one company. Wow. Think about it. Wow. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I see. Which one builds more security? <laughs> Clearly putting the money in the bank as you go gives you a better chance to be able to do things going forward with each additional company and take greater risks. You have the ability to collect and grow the money that you take each time, whereas at the end of the 10 years, you take $10 million. Right. So is it better to stay with one company forever or to leave 10 companies and make the money and, and try to figure out different ways of growing? You know, out here in, in SF Tech, we, we, we're doing what we call the gig economy. Of All of us almost, I mean, in the tech area, it seems to have like three or four jobs, you know, and so it's, you know, we're, we're constantly flipping things. We're constantly doing things. It's, you know, I think it's a little bit different here because of the, uh, we're more in the app world here, um, you know, and the barrier to entry is a lot uh, easier, so you could probably uh, there's going to be you know millions of those type of companies here. Well, I'm in my practice right now, with things that, I, that that Colonial does, I own equity in several companies. Mm. One of them went public. Right. I have equity in a public company. That's I've got great. another one that has a valuation to it. I can actually assign numbers to them <laughs> what the value is of what I own. Wow. Some others that don't yet have good valuations that I can assign, uh, you know, but, but two of them, one of them is liquid, will soon be liquid because I'm off a lockup, and one, okay. and one uh, is one where there may be some significant value and some companies are talking to us about doing deals. So, you know, I don't know where those are going to end up yet, but you can have multiple jobs like you say, and if you have equity in those multiple things and each one of them, but if you assess each one to start with, and try to determine the value of that entity you're going to be in and have something that carries over if you get an exit out of it, you have a chance to win. So you can do three or four different things. And maybe you're getting some cash, maybe you don't. Well, a lot of times I work and I take equity, but I don't take cash because companies don't have it. So it depends on how I work up the arrangements. Wow. Okay. So let's go to, that was number five. We, we, we talked a lot about uh, the exit. So let's talk about... Uh, 